Hey there, welcome to my studio here in New York City. I'm Daniel Norton, photographer. Today we're going to talk about photographing a reflective object. So one of the mistakes that I see people make when they get into doing product photography and reflective things is they try to remove all the reflection and highlight. And when you do that, it makes the item seem fake. It seems it doesn't look real, right? When things are reflective, they should reflect. The real key to this, whether it's jewelry or in this case, a toy, is to control the reflections to give the result that you want. Control is the key, not elimination. So I'm gonna photograph this here. It's a little toy. This is something you might want to photograph if you were selling it online or something. And it's in a plastic container. We want to show that there's plastic here because people want to see something that's unopened, right, or whatever. You could just, I guess, buy another one and photograph that one and then put it separate, but we're trying to sell this, right? So we have this in the plastic container. We want to show that, but we don't want the glare from the plastic to cover up the, the, the guy inside or the color, or to distort the color. So what we're going to do is we're going to do like we did with the sunglasses, like we've done with other things, light it from behind with a large source of light. This is going to give us an overall feel for the shot. But because this is not just flat like sunglasses, it has, it's rounded, we're going to get reflections, unlike the sunglasses, and I'll show you how to deal with them. But let's get the basic shot first. So I have a silk here from Shamira. It's basically more or less overhead, but not flat. It goes a little bit behind it. I've, I'm on a piece of white foam core board, and I just have this little roll, extra roll of tape here that I'm gonna to use to help stand this up. Because if we lay it flat, short of getting on top of it, which was not really gonna work. Overhead shots for these don't work as well because you will get the reflection. You're not gonna be able to see, right? we'll just see his feet. So I'm gonna use this to get it in place. And we're tethered in a capture one. One thing I am gonna do here is kill those lights in the space because I wanna use my modeling light. Okay, I mean, it's still, still light in here, but now I'll be able to see it. I'm using a Pro Pro to be 10 up there. I'm gonna turn on the modeling light. This way I can see what I've got going on here. I'm gonna go into capture one and I'm going to do a screen capture so I can see and look through and I can see that I've got, you know, some weird stuff, the composition is not great. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get this in a position that looks better. I know that if I photograph it like this, well, I'll have to show you. We're going to get a lot of glare, right? We got it up here, we're seeing distortion and that is because light is make, light always does the same thing, right? We can, it's predictable. Bounce, bounce. We need to make sure that the angle of incidence is not equal to the angle of reflectance in our lens. So we don't want this. We want to give it more of a steep angle so the, the light won't reflect back. So what I'm going to do is jump in here. Again, I'll do it here so you guys can see. And I'm going to actually stand it up a bit more. It'll actually look better anyways that way. We don't want to stand it up too much. Now there's two advantages to stand this, this up. One is that we're gonna eliminate a lot of that reflection that's coming from the back here. The other thing is that when we stand it up like this, we're gonna get a little bit of a drop shadow. It'll look more three-dimensional, which just looks nicer in general. I'm gonna move it a little, I'll leave it where it is. I'll just raise the camera a little bit to get a better composition. Okay, and that's roughly, that's a better spot. Now I'm just gonna straighten it. All right, it's nice and straight now. I'm gonna come in and photograph I focused on the words in the back, but I'll probably photograph, photograph on the toy in the future. And we can see already a lot better, right? We don't see distortion. We can see the robot's eyes inside. It is a little bit soft because I did focus back there, so I will change my focus point to the front. Okay, right now we have a decent exposure, but it's, it's not, it, you might say this looks fine, and it's not terrible. This is passable for sure. What we want to do, though, is try to control some of this reflection. Before I get into that though, I'm just gonna jump in here and do a quick white balance, because I wanna make sure I have the right, uh, right color. And I just know that once I get this thing in place, I'm gonna have a harder time doing it, so I'm just gonna go that, like that. Okay, cool, let's take another shot. All right, now we've got good color, which is important. Everything looks decent, but we can make it better. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna come in here, and I'm gonna use, this is Cinefoil. You can use black foam core cards, you can use whatever you like, just something that you can kind of get into the position that you want. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna do this on both sides, but I'll do one side first to really show you. We're gonna bring this in, and we're going to reflect back 
the black in the areas that we don't want. So I'm gonna get this guy here. Okay, and what, oh, that's actually pretty good. Okay, so if we bring it in too close, right? I'll take a shot, I'll show you. That doesn't look good, right? Because we have too much black over here. Right? So we want some of this reflection. See how nice it is right there? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and drag this back until we get just the right amount. It's like a Goldilocks, right? The Goldilocks of reflections. And we can see nice crisp line here and across. See how this one's fat and not nice? We're gonna come in here and do the same thing on the other side. This all might seem minor, but the reality is, is that what sets the pro photo apart are the little details. We can see now how nice this is. And if we really wanted to, we could, we could mess with this up top. I think this is actually fine up here, but if we wanted to control that, we could do the same thing. So like I said at the beginning, the goal here is to control our reflections. You can also spend all day getting them all precisely reflecting exactly what you want. And you'll do that if you're doing a high-end project where you have one thing to shoot the whole day. If you're doing simple things like this, just that little bit of extra to control it is enough to put your images above the rest. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and ring the bell. Like the video if you did, and check the description below for links to all the tools I used here, also a link to my Discord server and my Patreon. I'll talk to you soon.